I right, Shalom, Shalom Israel. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glorification to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bashem, Hamashiach, Malachi, Yahushai. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God, and Yahweh Shai being the name of his beloved Son, who the world called Jesus Christ, whom is the Savior of the nation of Israel. It's Brother Malachi out of the WFI Detroit camp, coming at you with another cold cut. Tawah Baba Kwa Yasha Allah. Right, and this is from endtimeheadlines.org. It reads, Priest dies and claims he went to hell and wouldn't wish it on his worst enemy. Right, so here you have it. A so-called priest dies and he claims he went to hell. Right, so this is a total lack of understanding of the scriptures. Misconceptions that Christianity will have you believing in because according to the scriptures there's no hell there's no physical place where you go to burn forever now the scriptures does speak about the lake of fire that's mentioned in the book of revelation All right you got the 18th chapter you got the 22nd chapter right you also have isaiah the 34th chapter the scriptures speak about thermonuclear war coming upon the land to create that lake of fire to destroy wicked off the earth right so let's get a couple precepts and we're going to go into that article because you have to understand these are all the strongholds that man is under let's get ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 29 right it reads thus, Lo, this only have I found, that God have made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. What's the inventions of man? To create concepts like hell, to create concepts like immaculate conception, and all these different heresies and doctrines that's not sound in the scriptures. And the Lord said there will be false doctrines in the last days. And all these things turns away man from the tree of life. These are spirits set up to turn away man from the tree of life. These are the cherubims. Right? So this is 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the spirits speak of expressively that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now we're living in the last times. These are the last days. You got a lot of things going on on the earth. A lot of prophecies coming to pass. A lot of evil. A lot of wickedness. Right? That's why the Apostle Paul stated in the book of Ephesians, you have to walk circumspectly, not as fools. Because if you're not circumspect, if you're not vigilant, if you're not measuring the times, Satan is going to have his way with you. Satan is going to put seven other spirits on you vex your spirit in your temple and bug you out in this wicked and dark land. So we always have to make sure we're on our P's and Q's and walk them circumspectly, not as fools. So it reads again, some shall depart from the faith. You got people leaving the truth, going back to that old man and returning back to that vomit as it states in Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 11. And also second Peter. Right. And it reads, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with that hot iron. Right. So the point is the doctrines of devils, for example, hell, immaculate conception. God loves everybody. The Lord is coming back to save humanity and the whole planet Earth and and everybody that dwells therein, and he's come back in a, you know, to, to bring a rainbow correlation about man. No, that's not what the Lord is coming back to do. The scriptures speak about how the Lord is coming back with a sword. Let's get that in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34. It reads, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Right, so the Lord is coming back with a sword. What do you do with a sword? You slay. 
You put to death. You destroy, you annihilate. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 110, and verse 1. It reads, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. So this is a precept. And precepts and scriptures rather. On the judgment that the Lord is bringing on this earth. And upon the nations. It says he's going to strike through the kings. Put him down. Lift up his head. Fill the places with the dead bodies. Utterly obliterate the nations of the earth. And the remnant of them that's left in the land, they're going to be put into slavery, according to Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 16. And Revelation chapter 13 and verse 10, the classic. Isaiah the 14th chapter. Isaiah the 60th chapter. Psalms 149 and the list of other precepts. Which ultimately goes back to the blessing of Jacob to have all the nations bow before Jacob. Right? So going back to the point of this article, all these concepts and lies that the world is under, these lies are going to get put down in the last days. Because the so-called white man don't know what's going on. Right? The scriptures say none of the wicked shall understand in the book of Daniel chapter 12 and verse 10. Right? So this is also edification for the sake of the Israelites, because you got a lot of our people that's still under these wicked concepts. There's no such thing as hell. Now, when you die, your spirit goes back to the heavenly father. You get judged according to your works that you committed on the earth. The most I send you back down to live again. And you live out your judgment. This is why people may be born blind. Right. They may be born with some kind of infirmity. They may be born. Uh, 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 to a wicked family they may be born to a family that forsook them now they get raised in foster care subject to all kinds of abuse now you might say well you know that, that, that's bad that's horrible and it is bad and horrible but everything is the judgment of the lord okay so it says priest gerald johnson from michigan claimed to have visited hell after suffering a heart attack and said the experience changed his life forever. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Now, why wouldn't you wish pain and suffering on your worst enemy? We wish pain and suffering to the so-called white man and the nations daily. Right? Because these are the people that oppress us. These are the people that keep us low. And murder us daily. Right. And the scriptures say none doth resist. We don't resist when these people do these things to us. You got a lot of our people that's cooned out. They love the so-called white man. They so engulfed in the concept of Christianity that they can't see the oppression in the land. Right. But the true men of the Lord, we're going to stand up for the sake of righteousness. As it states in Psalm chapter 94 and verse 16. The Lord said, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? We got to be the men that rise up. We got to be the men that step up to the plate. We got to be those men that call out the nations in their oppression and fight for our people as it states in Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, more specifically the 14th verse. So, yes, we wish the worst pain and suffering upon our enemies. And these are the people spoken about in Psalm, the 83rd chapter. Now, when it comes to the enemies, Salaki, the enemies of our own nation, 
that's different. We wish love, liberation, healing to the enemies of our own nation. You can read about that in Exodus chapter 23 and verse 4. If you meet your enemy of your own nation, ox or his ass going to straight, you can't forbear to bring him his ox. Right? You got to have love for your brother. Right? And the scriptures also say in the book of Proverbs, you can't rejoice when your biggest enemy falleth. That's talking about the enemy of your nation. Because we're going to rejoice and wash our feet in the blood of the wicked as it states in Psalm chapter 58 and verse 10. Right? So you have two different types of enemies. You have enemies of your own nation, right? Or, or, or domestic enemies. And then you have outside enemies. You have enemies of the other nations. Right? And it reads, he said Johnson posted his claims in a series of TikToks and claimed that he was sent to hell in February 2016 after his heart attack. In one of his more viral videos, which got 3.7 million views, Johnson said that he indeed saw hell. I was there. <laughs> and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I don't care what he did to me. No one deserves that. Now, how are you going to say something like that? How are you going to say something like no one deserves uh, their judgment? Were well, you going against the order of the Heavenly Father? Because according to the scriptures, millions of people, you know, and, and damn near all of the earth de uh, deserves the judgment of the Lord due to the wickedness. He did to me. It say no one deserves that. The priest from Michigan described a moment when he was launched to the center of the earth where he says hell is. It said my spirit left my physical body and I thought I was on my way up to heaven. He remember I thought I did so much good during my life and that I helped so many people. But even so, I went down to hell. I entered the very center of the earth. The things I saw there are indescribable. It brings up so many difficult feelings when I talk about it. All right. So let's get a precept on that, because notice he said his spirit went downward. Let's see what the Bible says. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse. I start at the 20th verse. It says, all go to one place. All are of the dust and all turn to the dust again. And that goes back to the curse that fell upon man. The fact that we have to die. Right. We return back to the, uh, the dust because we was made from the dust of the earth. That's in Genesis 2 and 7. This is why at funerals, they say ashes to ashes, dust to dust, because according to the scriptures and according to the, 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 the you know, the, the, the course of life, man turns back to the dust. That's why they bury man six feet under. And it reads, who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward. So your spirit goes upward to the heavenly father in the heavens. And the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. Right? Now, are you saying you're an actual physical beast, so-called white man? Because you're saying your spirit went downward to the earth. So are you an actual physical beast? Now, we know and understand that man is personified as spiritual beast. Right? But according to this man's logic and his understanding, he would be an actual beast because he proclaimed that his spirit went downward to the earth right so you when you, once you go into these concepts and examine the matter and learn you understand and know that these doctrines are folly these doctrines are false so it says again who knows the spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth Right? So man's spirit goes upward. Let's get a precept on that. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 7. It says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it. Right? So your spirit goes back to the Heavenly Father. Now your body dies and sees corruption, and it gets buried six feet under the earth. But nonetheless, your spirit doesn't go to the center of the earth. 
and burn forever because your spirit is a fire. You know, the scriptures speak about how your spirit is a consuming fire. So how can your spirit be burnt up or be subject to any kind of physical hurt when it's a spirit? Physical hurt is of the flesh. Right? Let's also get Job chapter 3 and verse 17. It reads thus. Dare the wicked cease from troubling and dare the weary be at rest. This is talking about the spiritual realm. It say, dare the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. Right? So, this is going into the spiritual realm. And all men go to the spiritual realm when they die. Whether they was wicked or righteous. It reads, the small and great are there. And the servant is free from his master. Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery and life unto the bitter soul. Right? So, all go to this one place. It's not talking about hell. It's not talking about a place where you go to burn forever. It's not going into these things. <clears throat> right? Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 22. Let's go a little deeper. It say. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Right. So this is where people get mis mixed up and get the concept of hell misconstrued in the scriptures because they read hell fire and they automatically think of a place where you go to burn forever. Right now, when you go into this word hell in Matthew 5 22, in the Greek, it goes into Jahana or Gahana, rather. It goes into Gahana, which means slaughter. It goes back to a place in Israel that was called the Valley of Hinnom or the Valley of the Son of Hinnom, where they would offer up sacrifice. Wicked kings in Israel would offer up sacrifices and sacrifice their children. In this set place. Right. That's why it was also known as the valley of slaughter. So ultimately what the Lord is saying is. You're going to be slaughtered. If you're angry with your brother without a cause. If you're holding grudges. If you're not keeping the commandments. You're going to be slaughtered by where it is fire. You're going to be slaughtered by the nuclear fire. Let's get a precept on that. Let's get Jeremiah the seventh chapter. Right, I believe it's the 21 verse. Maybe bear with me. Here we go. Jeremiah 7 and 31. Right? It says, And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire. Right? So again. Gahana goes back to the word slaughter or the valley of the son of Hinnom because this is what the ancient kings in Israel were doing in this valley. They were slaughtering their children, offering up sacrifices, doing all manner of witchcraft. Right? So it became metaphorical or symbolic for a place of slaughter. And it reads. Which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place. And the carcass of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. See that? So this is symbolic for the nuclear missiles destroying wicked off the earth. And that's why it's vital to understand and read the Old Testament. You're not going to get the understanding of the new if you haven't drunk of the old. Right? So going back to the article. And the point is pretty much made. It says, uh, 
And this is folly. It say a priest of seven years described some of the things he witnessed when he visited hell, including a man walking on all four legs, <laughs> walking on all fours like a dog and getting burnt from head to toe. His eyes were bulging, and worse than that, he was wearing chains on his neck. He was like a hellhound. There was a demon holding the chain. This is folly. Right? So this guy mine. This this guy this guy mine isn't right. <laughs> so let me get um let's get uh let's get Jeremiah. Let's get Jeremiah ten twenty one. It say for the pastors are become brutish and have not sought the Lord, therefore they shall not prosper, and all their flock shall be scattered. So the scriptures say the pastors are become brutish. Right, these pastors are brutish, right? They don't know what's going on. And if you don't know what brutish means, look up the word, do your homework, right? So these pastors, they don't know what's going on. They 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 divine for money, they finesse congregations, they set up lies just for the sake of money. You got certain pastors that so called selling the blood of Jesus, right? You got you got these pastors and these 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 false uh, Christians over there in the land of hand walking on coals of fire, talking about it's for the the goodwill of the Lord. So strong delusion is real, and you got a lot of men that's drunk in these last days. Let's get First Thessalonians the fifth chapter. All right, we're gonna close it out with this. Let's get 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 5. It says, Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For the Most High have not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Hamashiach Yahushua. So we can't be sleep, we can't be drunk, which is drunk off philosophy and doctrine and the false ideologies of this wicked world. We have to be sober minded, clear headed, and we have to be focused on the mission at hand. And that mission is to obtain salvation. Wake up the Israelites by way of preaching this Bible. And also keeping our spirit and our flesh under subjection, right? Not allowing the spiritual demon Satan to vex our temple, but rather fighting daily in his truth. And that goes for all of us. I myself, right? So with that, I want to give all praises, honor, and glorification to the Most High. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. I want to say come out of Christianity, the false wickedness of this world, false ideologies, doctrines, heresies. And all these seducing spirits that this world is under. So with that, all praise to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. Shalom.